you're up. Your first uh, swing skill that could change things substantially for a team involved, for players involved. And by the way, like, yeah, we, we kind of talked about the player involved there with Zion. Like, you know, again, if Zion can shoot and pull up from 16 feet and shoot like a spot three, that's the best player in the league, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. So, I mean, we're talking about like, I mean, a team that's been – top 10 in offense and defense for most of the year and you're talking about that being like legitimately that okay i think that's in getting pretty close to best offense just on a whim like that um yeah so fun to think about uh for me i went with deandre hunter in atlanta um and it's just more like latent skill so like okay if he can if his handle gets a little bit tighter um gets a little bit more shake to what he can do and he starts to see things a little bit quicker. So in other words, <laughs> if he could really play the three, um, I think that's what would open up for him. Because right now, I think one of the biggest issues with their lineups is that he just – like there are a lot of guys who they can get the advantage for DeJounte and then they really aren't able to fully capitalize on it. Like there's a lot of ball holding, a lot of pausing. Um, and I think – like I like DeAndre. I think I still – I'm fine with the the contract that he got. Part of that's because I just don't really care for contract talk. Um, but in looking at what he can do, I think that is what they are really hoping to see from him. But there's always been the stretches and flashes. Like he's had some really nice stretches lately um, that have been promising. But again, I think seeing this become a consistent thing where he can routinely create off the dribble. And it's not even like, okay, let him isolate and create off the dribble. No, it's like, okay, can you catch and go? Just doing that stuff routinely. Like, can you keep the ball moving? I think that's stuff that feasibly he can get to on during this contract. And that would make a really big difference for this team. Because right now, I think they can really – their offense can struggle at times when he's playing the three for them. Um, so that would be – especially when we're talking about a team that with John, uh, John Collins likely finally on the move this trade deadline um, and with some possibility to see just a little bit more – of their wing heavy lineups, um, even with the starting lineup now, uh, I would be very interested to see that because that then you're talking about actually having more versatility throughout their their team because then you have a guy who can really play the three and the four instead of just being really only a positive on offense at, on, at the four right now. Um, and having the ability to be more of a two-way player through that would be really exciting to see. But everything with him – seems to be more on his terms when he has it going on offense. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot of that mid post stuff that Nate McMillan loves to run. It's a lot of, you know, I'm going to try and drive. He he's like, he has the thing that Malcolm Brogdon used to do where like he catches and pauses all the time mm -hmm. as opposed to like just moving quickly and keeping the offense in flow and in rhythm and allowing them to keep the advantage. I think in part because like he has an advantage on guys for the most part, like he is six foot eight. He has a high release point. Like I think that he tries to survey for what the best way for him to score is a lot of the time as opposed whenever he gets that advantage on that kick out and he has to pause to do it. And I think that that's what worries me a little bit about him, I guess. Like it's, it's almost like the process, the processing speed needs to go quicker. Yeah. Right. Like that, that's yeah. actually kind of what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, definitely. I think again, like I think it totally goes hand in hand too with like, okay, he's seeing things faster, but also you get more uh, like just if his handles just better in general, I think you get more in terms of just margin for error with that. Um, but exactly. I think it's just doing everything a little bit quicker um, would really be pretty game changing for him as a player, honestly. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And like, how, here's, here's like a good question. Like, how do we think this would change the roster construction of the Hawks moving forward? Because I, I think it actually would change things pretty substantially for them because it, look, it, it seems like the John Collins thing is going to end at some point here. Maybe they get through the season, but look, I tend to think that when things go this far at some point in the next six months, at the very least, it'll reach its logical conclusion right uh so let's say they do move john collins i do feel like because we also have a circumstance where they have aj griffin on this roster who is a guy that has shown more flashes driving the basketball than what we saw at duke i think mm -hmm. 
but still has his own questions in terms of being able to consistently create from the three as like a secondary playmaker. How do you think that DeAndre being able to process, being able to be like an actual secondary playmaker would change the structure of the Hawks in general? Uh, That's a good question. I think like, I mean, maybe in some ways you could put it as that opens up even more room to be willing to play AJ. Um, I think like, obviously like, I'd actually argue that AJ in terms of what they need offensively at the three, he's been their best option in some ways. Like you, you obviously you have trade-offs with what is actually getting put out there. Um, But like in terms of a guy who can, like he doesn't even necessarily need plays to run for him. He's capable of just like being a guy who can play off the ball and, and be a function of the offense. Um, Cause I think that's the stuff DeAndre doesn't necessarily thrive at right now. Um mm. So I think when you're talking about, okay, if you can have two guys who are doing stuff like that, especially with like part of what, uh, what's hard is in some ways, okay, do you, is this just boiling down to this being a trade problem? Is this boiling down to Nate's schemes? I think it's obviously both, you know, gauging what level of both. I can't do that. I'm not part of the organization. Um, But in just in terms of what they run now and how vanilla it is, and considering that they're pretty much just playing off of the advantages that Trey and DeJounte create, like having two guys who can capably keep an advantage going and create just a little bit like that, that's game changing. Cause especially right now, like exactly. Like I feel like so often you see like Atlanta can get a pretty good initial bend in the defense. And then the play just kind of dies because of what they're with the way that the teams are willing to guard their spacing. Um, and what they do when they actually have the ball in their hands. Yeah. It's really interesting. If you look at lineups with John Collins and DeAndre Hunter on the court without Trey Young, uh, the team has like a negative 15 net rating because the offense falls to like a 96 offensive rating. Yeah. Uh, Basically just like completely falls off of a cliff. Uh, If you look at like, you know, Trey, Trey Young lineups with, DeAndre Hunter, you know, they're very slightly positive. If you look at Trey Young lineups with just John Collins without DeAndre Hunter, they're negative, but not nearly as negative as they are when it's Collins and Hunter without Young. And I would imagine a lot of those Collins and Hunter without Young lineups include DeJounte Murray. Uh, and I could look that up if I really wanted to, but uh, just kind of watching the Hawks feels like they do play a decent amount of that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Well, watching trying to figure out how they build that team now with the limited assets they have due to the DeJounte Murray trade is a really, really intriguing concept to me. Uh, They're going to have to like trying to figure out what they do with the John Collins deal and what they actually target for him is fascinating. Do they try and like rebalance the roster a little bit in terms of, do we go get a wing? Do we go get someone like Boyan Bogdanovich in a deal like that? Uh, Or do we try and get someone who could be like a secondary playmaker or do we just go get like another four man? Like I saw a report that was like, yeah, the Hawks are looking for a spacing four man in a deal with John Collins. And I was like, wait now, John, John has made like 37% from three. I know he's in a slump this year, but like over the last three years, I think he's at like 37 from three. Are you going to do much better than that if you trade like John Collins for a deep, for a player like this? Um, so yeah, how they rebalance that lineup is big, and I actually think that the gamble that they have now taken on DeAndre Hunter with this contract, they are expecting him to take this leap. Like that yeah. that is that that is the biggest thing. Like they desperately need him now to take this leap. They have hindered their flexibility in terms of assets. They've hindered their flexibility in terms of cap flexibility because of this contract, like they need him to take this leap without that. They are in some real trouble here moving forward. I think. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, they very much need him to get back to where he was at two years ago before he got injured. I think it was the wrist injury, Um, but that 20 game stretch he had, yeah, like that's the stuff that you want to see again. Um, And part of that too was like, he was just really hot shooting, but I think you saw a lot of the, him getting into things quicker, him just being in a real rhythm, um, that we haven't really felt quite as much since then. And again, it's worth noting too, like he is still a fine NBA player. Like he does positive things that matter at a position that is hard to get players at. 
um, who, who do things that are, are good enough to keep them on both ends of the court. But I think that for what they really need offensively, they do need a little bit more out of him. 